So, speaking of people. Speaking of people? Speaking of people. Because that's really what this Amico has come down to. The Amico has become the can we sell Tommy Tallarico to the masses system? It is less about the system. It is more about Tommy, and it has been for... Was, but that's how it was always. Yes, but I think people are really starting to realize that. Anyways, Kotaku came out with an article uh, by Zach Zweizen, uh, the new gaming console that's become a giant car crash to explain. It's explained, good article, very kind of high-level overview, um, does a good job at recapping, I would have. I, I'd really like to see people look into the funding, uh, particularly the fund. Fundable is the most recent one, right? I can't even keep track of this shit anymore. Fundable is the most fundable, recent. Fundable, yeah. It started with Figs, then it went to the Republic, which is also the same company. Now it's Fundable. It's like the third round of it. But if somehow you still haven't heard about the Intellivision Amico and the weirdness that's going on with it, um, this article is a great place to jump in. Then you can jump into the Ars Technica article from a couple months ago mm -hmm. to get a little bit more information. And then if you want the nitty-gritty, you can go back and listen to Pat and I talk about uh, the Amico ad nauseum. Um, so, yeah, this goes through and simply talks about, um, you know, uh, the three delays... Uh, it talks about how Tommy being the spokesperson for the system is not likely the best choice since he gets fiery and argues with anyone who has even the least bit of criticism about his system. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think one of the more interesting things about this article is that it started unlocking uh, stories from Tommy's past. People yeah. started looking, uh, people started taking to the comments section, and uh, this this happened even a little bit with the Ars Technica article. Um, but I think people are starting to pay more attention now. The, the more it gets into the public, more people are looking at Tommy, and stories of working with Tommy in the past are starting to come out, and they're not particularly great. Yeah, real quick, I believe that this article is a great overview from, like, it, it, it pretty much sums up uh, most of the stuff we've covered the past, uh, Jesus Christ, three years on, on this project at this point, and gives you, like, this is a primer. This is, like, you can show this link to anyone, Grandma can read this, or, or little Susie down the street. It's like, oh, you know, I wanna, I'm, I'm little Susie. I want to learn about the, uh, the, the, the Amico and where it's been and where it's going. You can read this article. Whether or not you agree with Kotaku's, you know, stances on stuff, or what, this is a well put together article, in my opinion. Covers all the, all the nuts and bolts. Sure. It doesn't give you, a, you know, it doesn't go through everything, but it even has some of the Jay Allard stuff in here that we've talked about. Talks about even stuff that, you know, that Ian brought up, like how the, the updated 2021 trailer was the exact same trailer just about as the, the 2019 trailer. There was like no new gameplay for most of the games. And what does that mean? But I didn't want to ever talk about a lot of Tommy's personal behavior because obviously he sunk low enough to try to personally attack us since almost the beginning, our personal appearance and making just up stories. Just a reminder about, that that's yeah. why this took off the way it did. Absolutely. I saw somewhere a pretty good uh, summary of how like the whole thing went as like a, a a mock conversation between two people. It was like, hey, have you heard about this Amico? Huh, no, don't think it's got a whole lot of, you know, capabilities, but uh, I guess it'll be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Tommy complains, you know, there's more information. And basically it's just like, we're like, no, no, okay, this is weird. Like he's overreacting to the things we've said. And then finally it's like, oh, now he's making it personal. Like it, yes, it, that's, he, that's he made happened. it personal. He made it personal. <laughs> And, and you can say, well, you guys got a bias. And it's like, okay, it's, what we're saying is still absolutely true. So, like, we would not lie about stuff. Even if we had a bias, we'd be like, okay, well, it's coming out. If, if the Amigo came out by now and sold a million of them, I'd say, you know what, Ian? We were wrong. Tommy's a douchebag, but we were wrong. There was a market for this console. Yeah. Well, we, we couldn't lie at that point. But it is what it is. So, um, do you want to go through some of these stories in here? You can go ahead. You can start on that. Okay, I was trying to get my Comic-Con tickets. Uh, here. So it's interesting because, like I said, I have been told a lot of stories about Tommy Tallarico, and we never talk about this stuff. Even while Tommy says, like, well, Pat, you, you lost friends because of your Amico coverage. Like, I have not met one of those friends that I've lost. Or else they're not telling me they're not my friends when I talk to them on the phone. Unless, unless Ian secretly is not my friend anymore. Ian, are you still my friend? Yeah. <laughs> That wasn't that wasn't convincing <laughs> to me. I don't think. If I wasn't your friend, it certainly wasn't over the Intellivision Amico. Oh, 
Okay, no, uh oh, this is a rift. So this is this is from uh, Bass Beast. Let me tell you a story of Tommy Tallarico. It's E3 2003. I'm at Universal Studios for a performance of More Friends Final Fantasy. My wife was big shot with Ziff Davis back in the day, rest in peace. So Square sent her a couple of plum tickets for the show. We get there and this incredibly short man taps me on the shoulder. I'm 6'4 for reference. He barely reached my shoulders. It's Mr. Tallarico. In the rudest possible voice says, hey, buddy, you're in my seat. I triple checked my ticket and showed it to him. Sorry, Mr. Tallarico, but this is my seat. He lost it. What bullshit is this? How the fuck am I supposed to see anything over your giant fucking head? Who are you anyway? You're not important enough to sit here. I pointed at my wife. I may not be, but she is, so I am. He walked off muttering. I'm pretty sure I heard the word, the C word in there in reference to my wife. I didn't want to get any blood on the aisle. Moral of the story, fuck Tommy Tallarico, the short asshole who's also a tiny man. So I had heard stories from people I know about some behavior of Tommy at certain events, basically big time behavior, like stuff like being at MAGFest and like walking to the X. You know, usually at convention you have one door for the X. Yeah. He'll walk to, to the, the wrong door and basically go to the guy, you know, do you know who I am to get through? It's like, dude, just walk to the proper exit. Don't, you know, don't fuck with the volunteer, you know? So you're not surprised you see this sort of behavior. But I, I guess once you see this coverage come out, it, it emboldens people to share their stories, you know? Yeah. Um, we got a guy, uh, he said that he worked, his, ex, his ex-wife's sister worked for the concert hall in the city where Video Games Live was playing. Uh, they were in a bit of a pinch. Two of the volunteer drivers had called in, so they needed someone to fill in to pick up people from the hotel and take them to the airport the morning after the show. I offered to help her out because why not? Got my car washed and detailed just to make sure I was making a good impression. Got there on time, and I got Tommy. He sneered when he saw my car, tossed his luggage into the trunk, got in, and as I entered my car, all he said was, don't fucking talk. So I drove him in silence to the airport. Nice guy. Wow. And we'll do the one more here. Uh, I worked at, at, with him once as a volunteer when Video Games Live came to my hometown. The opening to the show involved the cosplay contest where some willing participants would come on stage and cosplay, and, and we let the audience cheer for, for the costume they liked best. The winner got something, don't remember. Anyway, the setup ran a little behind schedule, and two of the cosplayers had some last-minute wardrobe malfunctions they were taking care of. Mr. Tallarico got increasingly annoyed and, and kept barking at us to get those losers out there so we can start the show. And one time I walked by him, I, I overheard him talking to someone about being in quotes, sick of these autistic losers always holding up his show. Whew. The show eventually went off without a hitch, and afterwards Tommy decided to reward, reward the volunteers by gracing up us with his company while we ate some takeout after the show. Well, uh, he's gone after my anxiety and shit before, so it's yes. obvious that, I mean, he, yes. he does not like people. He doesn't like people, or, or if you have any sort of, uh, you know, th things... He'll attack you for him. I told him I liked his choice in the games represented at the show, and he asked me if I could add if I could, if I could add anything. What would it be? Naturally, I suggested that I'd love to see the show one day include something from Undertale. He scoffed, mentioned that they only play songs from in quotes real games, and then stopped talking to me. Needless to say, the man is permanently that man is permanently pretty permanently on my shit list. And there's there's like more, like so. Yeah. Real games, Undertale, the game that is going to be far more recognized and popular than the Amico ever will be. So this isn't just to personally attack someone who personally has attacked us and others who are critical of the system, but it shows you the mindset of, of someone and why the person with that mindset is running a company, a startup, into the fucking ground. You, that is not the type of personality of someone who can successfully run a company like this, where you not just need goodwill... Uh, if you want to say influencers or people, but you need to have a positive public reception even to have a chance of a product that's already going to be extremely niche and it will have difficulty even finding its audience. Now you're going to have a lot of people that won't give it a chance because of the head of the company personally treats people like garbage. Well, and it also shows, yeah, exactly. Know, that He treats people like garbage and he treats them like cogs in a machine. Cogs in a machine is a good way to describe all those smaller YouTubers that Tommy associated with and exploited. Like that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, he used you for to, to keep this string along as much as he can. He used you to to get you all strung together for uh, videos to be used for investors and to put in emails and to show, hey, look, all these people are talking. That's all you were to him. That's it. That's it. 
means to an end. And unfortunately, a lot of them ran with that and made a dedicated... I gotta turn this off. Fuck this thing. Because it's not working anyway. Um, a, a lot... That was my Comic-Con uh, waiting room to get fucking tickets. Um, a lot of you transform your channels into a, basically a corporate mouthpiece for Tommy and threw away your integrity in the process, unfortunately. Whatever integrity you could have had as a smaller YouTuber channel. It's unfortunate. I kind of feel bad, but you should have saw it coming and you were warned. So you know what I mean? So I don't know what to say about that. Honestly, I think a lot of them, if they really wanted to go on and do other stuff, they probably could because they're small channels and I'm not even saying that as an insult. They're just, they're small channels. Sure. They can move beyond this if they want to. But, but if this you is a lesson to be learned. It's a huge lesson because if it shows you have that bad judgment for that situation, you don't have any proper judgment for other things that come along. That's all. But this isn't just a harp on personal stories tale. Um, we like talking about open positions at startup video game companies because it, it, sh it can tell you the health of the company and where the potential product is at. We famously talked about, we, we, we didn't go out on a huge limb, but like June of last year, we said there's no way this is coming out in October because there were like three important positions opening. Like uh, there was like full, full stack software dev uh, position. There was a firmware a fucking firm. They're looking for firmware and people to make the system run. That was as a quote from the job listings. I've never said we need someone to work on the OS and stuff to make the system run. And we were called out for it. We were crazy. It's definitely going to come out in October of 2020. No, we're, no, we're looking for people to work on accessories for the. Amiga. Yeah, Tommy said it's his accessories. Those fucking idiot podcasters. They don't know what they're talking about. We're working on accessories for 2021. Yeah, that's it was accessories. So in the past week. There have been two new positions that have come up. This is uh, via Indeed.com. Uh, the first one, I don't have a huge amount to say about it. Game console QA analyst. Honestly, that to me seems like something that probably would come up as they get closer to finalizing something. Before production? Before production, I mean, QA, they need someone to go through and test and run the hardware through its paces and make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. So if this was going to come out in October, this should have been filled by like January or so, or like way earlier in the Is year. Is anyone still hanging on um, to the notion that th they're going to have this in their hands by cr Christmas? No, it's not. So the QA analyst is... I mean, it never was, but I mean, there I are know. people who who, no. who, who no. dearly believed that. No, they, they got they got to get out of, the, out, of, out of the cult, basically. It's not happening. Um, so the QA analyst thing, 40 to 60,000 a year, that's a very low, 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 low... Um, salary for a job like this especially when you see the 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 experience you need to have this no one's going to fill this position easily for a, for a, you know, a full-time job so uh you're going to do end-to-end -end testing on the intellivision amico games and console hardware firmware os controllers they still don't have a person to do this and this this is supposed to come out well supposed to come out a, well supposed to come out a year ago it so ready. Like, they were on the this, launch this job listing should have been 2019 probably um Test case, suite creation and maintenance, automated test framework creation in concert with the rest of the team, and blah blah blah. So that's an interesting one. But then you have the, uh, then you have the OS middleware slash software engineer. Yeah, I think that's the more interesting one, frankly. So that one, so that one, uh, basically. I have been told by someone smarter than I that that is basically the person that you need to develop your web store and do the infrastructure communication the, you know, everything that's the, going to make this tick because keep in mind there's no real physical media <laughs> there's no physical media the physical media is just it, it, it's another way to access the online media everything is going to revolve around this web store and how it serves up files yeah and and and, and you know updates to games probably and firmware updates to your console that's probably part of this we always talked about that you know, you're seeing this being shown off. Uh, where's the, the web store? Can can he show the web store? Connect to it? Can it's he? It's one thing to see the system know? with a game preloaded on it. It's another thing to um, actually see the ecosystem working as intended. Yes. Can we? Where we, where we, where we said like, is, is there ever been a fully functional Amico? Has there been one where that version is the version that I buy and ended up in my hands that I set up my team? Is there a consumer version ready? And no. Obviously not. Fully functioning Amica does not mean demos running on a yeah on a, on, a, on, a, on a shell. No, that doesn't that it doesn't mean on, on on your on your cell phone board equivalent. That's that's fine. You got something booting up. That's great. You're you're running you're running basically an Android game. You've got that's progress. Fine. But like, 
if you put that in a consumer's hand, would that be acceptable or not? No. Would that be the two hundred fifty dollar to three hundred dollar investment? No. So this is what this OS middleware software engineer is going to be doing. Write middleware that will run on a custom embedded Android system. Write documentation for other developers to use the software. You think you would have had that already? For the, for the other game devs, write test code to verify software is running properly. Must wear multiple hats, hats and be able to do different tasks if required. So again, they're not they're not just a year behind. I think we're being generous. They're two years behind, I believe, schedule. Probably closer to two when it comes to this stuff. I mean, yeah, depending on how you look at it, you can uh, say that because yeah. this should have been yeah, these should have been positions they were filling a year before their initial launch date last year, if they were really on the launch pad. On the launch pad, the rocket fuel, whatever he said in that sleazy Neil Patel video, we're ready to go. And it's like, no, you were not ready to go. You never were. And this is being strung along now. Can't hear the word launch pad, by the way, without thinking of that strong jawed duck from DuckTales. I used to love the, the DuckTales side characters even more than you know, Scrooge, I hate they to say. They were great. Gizmo Duck was fantastic. So, yeah. or anything else to add here? I mean, like. No, I, I don't. I mean, I'm just repeating myself on this guy, but here we go. Uh, it, basically, the big thing is, uh, what, 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 what's the takeaway from today? Job position's not filled. Uh, but, shitty wow. attitude from that guy. Deja vu. The and... job, job position's not filled. It's like every every summer, it's still technically summer, the, the 21st. Every summer, we find out, shockingly, there's job positions well, not being filled. When you click that link, I didn't want to bring it up just in case it was one of those instances where they just didn't take something down after getting it filled. Uh, but if you click the link, and television entertainment job says four jobs at television entertainment are available, including... The uh, full stack software developer that we talked about last year and the other full stack software developer. Both of those are still up there with easily apply well, underneath. Well, there was a full stack one last year. There was also was a firm. Oh, oh, I see. They did one for each location. They want, they're, they're searching for one in Salt Lake City oh, and, and one, one in, in Santa, Santa Ana. Ana. So last year, uh, there was definitely, there was three positions. One was a firmware engineer. One was a software developer. It looks like this position. And there was a third one. I forget was a QA thing last summer. Uh, and the firmware one was the most damning one because it said you needed to write code to make the system run. That was yeah. in the description. Right. We weren't making that up. Uh, but if they're saying they still need a full stack software developer this far in, either they lost the last person or the person they hired, I guess, couldn't get the job done. Either way, that's Or they didn't take it down, but it still doesn't look good. And here's what I'm going to say about the salaries here real quick because uh, I, I talked to someone about the salaries. These are um, not super competitive salaries for, for, for the position experience that they need. 85 to 110 for Southern California for a full stack software dev is, is not a good salary. And maybe they're not offering enough potentially to, to, to get the talent they need for this. Maybe. I don't know. They want to go cheap on these super important positions that will, that, you know, if you don't have these positions filled by someone competent, you're, you don't have a product. That's why we said like you'd almost rather go into making cars than making a video game console. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds like the worst possible thing because any little, one little thing can screw up everything else. Right, when right. When it comes to it. So, all right. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see. We'll check back in uh, when these positions are potentially filled or, you know, we'll get more information on that unless you have anything else to add. No, no, that's, that's enough, I think.